everybody welcome back to my shop I hope everybody enjoyed part one of the sideboard buffet build this is part two I'm gonna be making the drawers today you can see I have my miter gauge set up with an auxiliary fence uh, it's a large fence because I'm starting with six foot boards and cutting them to rough length so I'm just gonna rough out all the parts from my drawers and then I'm gonna trim everything to its final dimension so let's get started Once I have them down to more manageable pieces, I'll bring over my crosscut sled and I can trim them to their final dimensions and then we can start to assemble these after we cut the grooves. Now that I have all my parts cut for the drawers, I have them laid out on the bench because what I want to do is obviously you want the insides of the drawers to look the nicest because that's what will be visible. The sides, they're kind of really not visible. They're hidden by the tracks. They're going to be inside, you know, of the carcass the whole time. When you open the drawer, you want the nicest face inside because that's what everybody's going to see when you open the drawer. So now that I've selected the nicest sides of all the pieces of the wood, I'm just going to put a line on all the pieces so that I know when I cut the groove now to accept the bottom, I know exactly what face I'm going to have facing down on the table saw to cut that groove. I'm going to set the height of my blade the three-eighths of an inch, which is half of the thickness of my wood that I'm working with for the size of the drills, I'm working with three-quarter inch material. So I'm going to set the depth of the blade to three-eighths and lock that in. And now we can run our groove. Now once you make that first pass and cut that first groove, it's not going to be wide enough if you're using a quarter inch bottom like I am. I'm using quarter inch plywood for the bottoms of these drawers and it's not going to fit because the blade is only just about an eighth of an inch. So what we need to do is slide the fence over and widen this groove and then do a test fit. Now I'm going to start the assembly of the drawers. So what I'm going to do is apply some glue to the end grain here and then I'm going to tack it in with some 18 gauge brads just to hold it together temporarily. Then I'm going to use my screw gun and I'm going to drive some screws in there to make it a permanent hold. Now I'm also only assembling three sides at first here because what I need to do is I need to put the bottom of the drawer in the grooves and then we can close it up with the fourth side of the drawer. Now I'm ready to cut the bottoms of these drawers, but to get an accurate measurement, I need to get inside the grooves here. So I find the easiest way to get an inside measurement without having to do any crazy math, take two pieces, these are my thin strips of uh, quarter inch plywood that I'm actually going to be using for the bottoms of the drawers, and they'll fit inside my groove perfectly. If not, you can, if you don't have anything left over from, you know, off cuts, then just, you know, get a piece and make a piece of scrap and stick it in that groove and stick it in the other groove. And then, once you have them bottomed out on both sides, I'm just going to take a squeeze clamp, squeeze them together, and you can see that they'll move freely in there. So I do have a little bit of play, so now I just lift it out of the top, take your tape measure, and measure from one end of the stick to the other, and I get 23 and a half. So what I have now is an accurate measurement of how wide my inside of my drawer bottom needs to be. Okay guys, well I have the drawers all made up and the tracks are installed. Uh, I previously installed these tracks not on camera because I just needed to save a little time. But uh, what I did was after I installed those, I took those side pieces and mocked them up over there, clamped them on, and then I made my measurements and that gave me the distance that I needed in between those tracks. This way I could make a perfect fit. Now you could follow the manufacturer's specs, which I do recommend because I also did the math on that just to make sure. I also have a previous video where I made a dresser and I installed those drawer tracks, the same slides, in that uh, video and I explained it in depth. Okay, so uh, that's back on my channel. Make sure you go back and watch that video. All right, guys, so I'm just going to do a quick test fit, and once I see that it fits good and they're operating smooth with no binding, then I can start to make up the nice oak drawer fronts that are going to match uh, the cabinet. OK, 
Okay, so they fit really good. Everything is flush, nothing's protruding. So that means that when I go ahead and I make these false fronts on these drawers, that it's going to sit flush against the rails and styles of the frame kit. So I just want to make sure I test them out. And nothing's binding. The drawers are strong and sturdy. Those are good sized drawers. All right, guys, so now let's get started on measuring up what I need here to make my false fronts. One detail I want to let you know that I'm paying attention to here is as I'm making the drawers, now the drawers are going to be side by side. So what I like to do is cut the bolt of those drawer fronts from one single piece that I can use to make the grain sweep across from one drawer to the other. So that you can see, that's a, it's just like a real, you know, ex extra detail that people really notice about a quality piece of furniture. So when you see this, once it goes on there, once I attach it to the actual drawers, you're going to see that grain pattern. It's going to continue. It's going to go right from one drawer. And then even though there's going to be like that half inch to uh, three quarters of an inch uh, gap in between, it's, it's not enough for your eye not to pick up the grain sweeping right across into the next drawer. Then, you know, pay attention to small detail like that. All right, guys, so let's uh, cut this up. I have the stop block ready. I'm going to cut this up, and then we're going to route a nice profile on it, and then we have to stain it. Now we're over at the rattle table with the drawer fronts and I'm going to route a nice profile on this with an OG style bit and you'll notice that I'm using a back of board here as I push it through on the end grain and that's just to eliminate any tear out. Now I'm using a cove bit with a stop block and a start block and what I'm doing is just rounding a simple cove on the bottom of each of the back of the drill fronts and that's going to act as a finger pull just until they decide what kind of hardware they want on there. Now I'll just apply the stain before I install these on the drawers I'll let them dry overnight. Now that the drawer fronts are finished, I have to install them on the drawers, and the easiest way to do that is to get some setup blocks so that you can put them equal distance on the drawers and to apply some double stick tape to the back of the drawer fronts. What that's going to let me do is, once I get it in place, I'll press it in with the double stick tape, and then I'll be able to pull the drawer out, and the front will stay attached with the double sided tape, then I'll be able to use the drawer front screws from the back to hold it in place. Now that I have everything set in place, I can screw the drawer fronts in. Okay guys, so that was the easy way to install these drawer fronts. I have some cleanup to do here. I'm still determining whether or not I'm going to use pre-catalyzed lacquer and spray this with a lacquer and then do a nice oiled armor seal varnish on the butcher block top. I'm definitely doing the armor seal on the top. The butcher block top has to get oiled and it has to have a nice good seal on it. And uh, that oil based varnish after 24 to 48 hours is also food safe even though they're not going to use it to cut meat on and things like that. You still want it to be food safe. So. This, I'm probably going to wind up doing the pre-catalyzed lacquer just because it's a lot easier to just spray everything 
and get a nice even coat, especially when everything is already put together. I won't have to worry about getting in those corners like that with small fine brushes, but um, it's still up in the air, 50-50. All right, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed building the project. Uh, we're still not done. We have one more part to go. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click on the little picture of the bell down there. This way you get notified every time I upload a video, uh, usually on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. Also, follow me on Instagram. I'm going to put a link right down here at the bottom of the screen, so make sure you check me out on Instagram. I usually upload photos you know, of uh, projects that are in process and, and videos that I'm getting ready to do and short clips and things like that. Okay, so uh, all right, guys, thanks for joining me in the shop, and I will see you next time.